there in the in the common room, and it was just like time lapse throughout the entire meal. So everyone was just like shoveling food in their mouth. I was like, it'd be so funny to go in there and add sound effects. Just <laughs> <laughs> And there was part where like the boat went by and you could see the waves coming in. I was like, Nyew. wish, 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 wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. How's the show notes on y'all's screen? Bueno. All right. Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Jean Shorts Roblox, yes. and you all know my co-host, Justin Chubby Shuttle Bird, and Uncle Colorblind Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley-related, Nutsack, the last EDC bag you will ever want or need, and Brush Hero, the ultimate detail brush. Today, we are discussing what happens when three Harley-riding douchebags test ride some Indians. What's going on, guys? I'm pretty good. I actually used my Brush Hero yesterday Saw that. to clean up the, the bike. God, yeah. It makes my wheels so damn clean. I'm not just saying this to talk it up. My wheels are freaking gorgeous using that thing. Yeah, I'm hoping to get mine taken care of this weekend because it's still filthy. My and Tracy's bike, both. Who are you paying to do it? No one. I'm going to do it. What? Oh, watch out. He's going to strap those jean shorts on and get Me. out there with his white New Balance. Yeah. <laughs> God. I better get some video of this. Ooh. So accurate. So excited. <laughs> you know, when he, so like when he says that I'm going to do it, I really feel like he's like, I'm going to pay someone. <laughs> so I'm doing it. I'm initiating He's going to go action. get a new bike. It's going to be clean as shit. <laughs> God. Dicks. <laughs> you know he's not going to take it in for the 5,000 mile service. No, I am. Actually, I have it scheduled. Oh, wow. For two weeks. That's when they can get me in. Damn. They're two weeks out? Yeah. Ouch. It's it gives you enough time to finish up that two hundred miles that I have left to actually get to five thousand. Want to do it yourself and be a real biker. <laughs> Those people can lick my balls. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a little update on the Patreon. So we have a new patron. A uh, special shout out to our newest patron, Rosie, who has joined the Big Wheel Club. <laughs> There we go. A lot better than that phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to help us out with Project Clean Slate, where we buy a Harley, customize the hell out of it, and give it away to a worthy veteran, then head over to BetweenTwoWheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O, and click on the Project Clean Slate link in the menu. We have multiple options for you to assist us in turning this dream into a reality, from becoming a patron to purchasing shirts or making a single donation. Every dime of revenue we generate is going to Project Clean Slate, so any help you can provide is greatly appreciated. I just uh, did my video for that. Oh, yeah? While coming up here. So hopefully we'll start pushing some traffic that way. Cool. Because cool. I'd like to get it done by this year. That's my goal. I My <laughs> my hope is to have it ready and given to the veteran before next riding season. Yeah. So I think that's more reasonable that's than reasonable. mine. reasonable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this episode marks the official end of season one. <sighs> This is our one year anniversary episode. Now, is that the wood year? Paper. Wood? Paper. 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 Well, that's boring. Money's paper. It's not, but okay. Anything's no, paper, it, really. I mean, <laughs> if you can draw on it, it's paper. Yeah. So, from me to you guys, uh, I'd like to say thanks for helping me create this thing. Feel validated. No, no that's, that doesn't happen at all. <laughs> but uh, for I'm helping me bullshit. create this and for just after a booping accident, us coming together and just creating something that it turns out people actually enjoy. So from the bottom of my heart, thank y'all. What's the thing with the porn that like anybody has an audience? Rule 34? Rule 34. I feel like that's the niche that we fall into. <laughs> Like somewhere out there, there's people that want to listen to three Harley riding douchebags just oh, kind of yeah. rip on each other and act like they know what they talk oh. about. <laughs> you have to go deep in that dark yeah. web to find us. All right. So to help <laughs> celebrate our one year anniversary, we have partnered up with Bike and Bird as well as the Alamo City Hog Chapter with the what we are calling the one, two, three event. 
Uh, so this is where we celebrate our anniversary for one year, the second annual Honor Flight fundraiser, as well as the third anniversary for the Bike and Bird YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So uh, this will be taking place on Saturday, June 22nd at Cowboys Alamo City Harley Davidson here in San Antonio. So if y'all are out and about and near the area, come on down and hang out. All right, so let's jump into the test rides now. When we were talking with the finance manager about the rental options for Indian, she had invited us out to their demo day. And it was a weird setup, too. It was a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Yeah, it was yeah. super weird. <laughs> but they, I had to take off work for it. <laughs> <laughs> but what they did, and the reason they did that, is so that they could be guaranteed the FTRs. Makes sense. And they wanted enough people to actually have a chance to ride it. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, we went out there, spent uh, the first half of the day hanging out, riding some Indians. So let's jump into the test rides. So for this one, Justin, you didn't actually get an opportunity to ride the Springfield, correct? Correct. All right. So Uncle Ken. It looked dope, though. I'll, I'll give you that. It was my favorite looking outside the FTR. It was my favorite looking bike. So to give the viewers and the listeners kind of a picture of what this is it was a in essence a denim white with everything else blacked out yep and if you don't know what the springfields look like they kind of look like the road king yes and this one had 16 inch ape hangers on it and it had the stage two um modifications to it so yeah. so ken what was your thoughts so this is going to be and i know y'all agree with me the suspension on it was great yeah on pretty much all of them. But this one, maybe it was the the size of the handlebars, mm-hmm. but I felt like handling was a little eh on it. Okay. It wasn't great. And that might be just my personal preference coming out, you know, how I ride. Uh, but, man, no. The suspension was great. It, it did everything that you'd expect it to do. And I had really no issues with the bike. And, I mean, just really smooth. I mean, all of them are really smooth. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, I mean, it's really, it's it's another Road King. Mm. I really didn't like the handlebars. Uh, but really, that's my only complaint about the bike. Which weren't stock. So. Which, yeah, which, no, which these are all stock. aftermarket stuff or the, uh, factory upgrade stuff. Correct. Yeah, the engine ran fine. I didn't feel like, like I didn't realize it had the Stage 2 in it. Mm-hmm. So it didn't. That didn't stand out to me. Nothing, as far as engine goes, it didn't stand out. It didn't sound like like they had like special cams in it mm-hmm. or anything like that. But, I mean, it ran well. Yeah. I probably wouldn't buy one <laughs> just because that's not my style. Sure. Uh, but, no, I mean, overall, it's a great bike. I mean, it's absolutely a competitor with the Road King. Yeah. So, for me, it felt like it was torquier that – updated upgraded whatever motor uh and i don't think their stage two had cams i think it's intake and exhaust and the the tune is their stage two is what trying to remember what was on the little sticker yeah, what's been know. done um but that engine felt torquier than the road king and maybe i didn't get to feel that as much based on where i was riding at in the group mm-hmm. i mean because we we're on a designated, you know, lead route. Yeah. So you really didn't get to like really test it out much, really yeah. any of them. Uh, but no, I mean, there was absolutely nothing wrong with it yeah. other than just, you know, the hand, the 16 inch handlebars. That's not for me. Yeah. And for me, I actually liked them. Um, so ours are 13 inch bars. Yeah. These are actually a little bit shorter than what I used to ride on my soft tail. And I, I actually missed them, but. I, I don't think I would like 16-inch apes today on a long ride. I think no. my shoulders are On a long old. ride? Yes, yes, no. because I'm old. My yeah. shoulders are shot. But I I really like the center of gravity on this. They all felt really good. They didn't yeah. feel I mean, heavy. I was able to kind of just throw it in to the corner. And I think, and it could have been the bars, but I think the center of gravity is slightly higher up than on the Road King. Now I'm used to currently riding Tracy's Road King. That's so it's already a lowered bike. Yeah. 
So maybe that's what's throwing me off. I, I don't really recall what was on my regular Road King I had. But it felt like the center of gravity on this one was a little bit higher, which actually made it to where you could fling it in a little bit easier. Um, but again, that could have been the ape hangers. Uh, but yeah, the handling was great. And the weight distribution. So cutting in, you know, I was trying to scrape the boards and I couldn't. And when I wanted to dip it in to a corner, it fell right in. And when I brought it back up, it came right back up without any issue. So I liked it. I think that that is definitely a strong competitor for the Road King. And if you, like for you, if you don't like the 16-inch bars, you can throw whatever size bars yeah. on there. Um, but yes, it was a gorgeous looking bike. Oh, it looked awesome. Very good. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to the Chieftain. Now, Justin, you did ride the cheap the Chieftain, correct? Correct. Okay. So I rode the regular version. I didn't ride the the one sixteen like you guys did. Okay. I rode the Dark Horse though, which I think that's, is that's the one sixteen. No, there was So you rode the same one I did. That was the stage two was the Dark Horse that they had. But it wasn't one sixteen though. There no. was it was a one eleven. So right. I rode okay. the one sixteen. He was the only one that rode the one sixteen. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, Ken, let's start off with you on the Chieftain. All right. So, the Chieftain, for people who don't know, it's just like the Harley Street Glide. Mm -hmm. Got that bat wing fairing. I thought it, I thought it did really well, honestly. Uh, one thing I did notice is, so I, I played with the different riding modes, which was nice. It's got touring, what normal or standard, and then sport. Yeah. So I played with those. Putting it into touring mode really nerfs. The throttle. Yeah. Uh, which was really kind of nice. Putting it into sport mode, you get instant throttle feedback. Hmm. Almost a little too much for around town. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, forget like if you're going to be getting on and off the highway or anything like that, man, it was great. So how hard was it on the touring bike for you to swap between... The modes. Uh, Pretty simple, right? Push, Pretty push of a button. Yeah. As, as, I mean, find the screen you need because there's multiple yeah. screens mm -hmm. for everything. And then, I mean, it's just, it's three buttons, touring, standard, and sport. And you just touch it and it switches right there. You can switch it on the fly. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be stopped or have it in neutral or pat and rub your belly at the same time or nothing special. Just push a damn button. Pat and rub your belly at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Only a little hesitation there, but he got it. <laughs> so what did y'all think about the hand controls and the navigation of the screens from the hand controls? Did you do that or did you use the touch screen at all? Or I is did, that the only thing you used? I did both. Okay. I did I both. Used, yeah, I used the hand controls and the touch screen. I thought it was really easy to use. I thought it was easier than the Harley to I agree. use. I think the button placement and just the, the way that the buttons and everything kind of work seamlessly ergonomics yeah there we go that's that's You're welcome that's See, the I, fancy book learning word i was looking for and i haven't used the harley navigation oh, that's, right. that's true or yeah. any of that okay so i mean it was easy for me to immediately get on and just figure it out figure it out within just a few minutes okay so justin what about you what was your thoughts of the chieftain I, I really liked it, honestly. Uh, some of the things that stuck out to me was the throttle. Mm -hmm. I, th I liked the, the throttle a lot better than, than the ones that are on the Harleys. I almost feel like, I mean, we kind of talked about it on our, our trip, is like the Harleys kind of have that, it, it sticks a little bit. Mm -hmm. And mine's getting really bad, but I noticed with theirs, there's, there's not a lot of resistance. And I think a lot of people might not like that. But on a touring bike, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, the grips were really nice. They were much better than they were on the Harleys. Uh, I did feel that the bike felt a lot lighter, even mm -hmm. though it was not a fixed fairing bike. It felt like it was. The low speed maneuverability of it felt way better than it did on the street glides. Mm -hmm. uh, just the overall handling and suspension was far better than Harleys, I think, in my opinion. Uh, the one area where I did feel like it lacked was the torque. You really had to be high up in the in the RPM range to really feel that power. Uh, and then it, it, of course, once you get up to around that highway speed, I, f I felt a, a night and day difference between my bike and that mm. bike. Even with the upgrades that it had, 
my my Rogue Glide Ultra would pull away from that bike on the highway, no problem. Six gear at sixty five miles an hour, it would be Harley Davidson all day long. Hmm. But uh, kind of to to some of your points, the the I really liked the riding modes. I feel like that's something that Harley really needs to incorporate. Especially, mm-hmm. yeah. I would say they need to incorporate it more into their soft tail line as opposed to their touring line. Yeah, because those are going to be the bikes that are kind of serving that dual purpose as opposed to the baggers primarily going to be used for touring. Uh, but the 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 usability of the interface was great like you said it was so easy to change the riding modes and get to where you were going um but yeah so light it felt light um lack torque and it looked good yeah so i'm kind of right there with y'all uh, but i don't like their fairing i think it's it's just too cluttered and it's like right up on you you're talking about the inner fairing yeah i agree okay yeah it yeah. did feel really really close it does feel close yes but i love that windshield you oh s- yeah you just hit the didn't button even mention the windshield. oh yeah i love the windshield love it harley take note and start building that shit in uh it's it was a great experience and you can tell a difference yes absolutely oh yeah so and we all wear rather large helmets uh so buffeting, at least for me, was not an issue when I went into the full touring mode of the windshield, having it all the way up. I didn't feel any buffeting at all. I still oh, had so an issue. I, I had an issue with buffeting. Even <laughs> with it all the way up. I, I tried it all the way down. I tried it all the way up. Same. And, hmm. that, and that was on both the Chieftain and the Roadmaster with their windshields. So I, I didn't have that issue at all. Now in sport or, you know, with it lowered, oh, yeah, I got buffeting all day long. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't get that. Uh, but yeah, I think it's all going to be different for different people. Yeah, you could be six five, but you know, five foot of eight in your legs, and you'd be fine. Yeah, and I do slouch a lot in the saddle when I'm riding, so yeah. that's probably a big key of it. I feel like that the with the windshield on the uh, the chieftain could have came up higher. I agree. Yeah, you'd have to swap it out, but it'd be doable. Yeah, I, I felt like compared to the Roadmaster, it just didn't go very high. So one of the things I'm I'm kind of right there with you, Justin, on the torque. It it the power was lackluster. Mm-hmm. Um, it was definitely a different power band. Yeah, for sure. So the the suspension, though, I think it. it I think was, that's their shining glory. It oh, was extra squishy, but I did bottom out. Oh, you did really? on that one. Now I didn't on the and I hit the same pothole. Every time, except for on the FTR. Yeah. I hit the same pothole because I wanted to see. And the Springfield, I didn't bottom out. And the Roadmaster, I didn't bottom out. So it could have been just the suspension was not set. That's Depends on how they have it preload, set up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I'm not going to really take it out. But I will say that overall, the suspension had just the right amount of squish as well as performance. So it would rebound correctly. And we, I mean, on some of the areas we did get on it pretty mm-hmm. good and it was a fun bike to ride absolutely so yeah i don't think that there's a clear winner between say for example the street glide and the no. chieftain no i i think no they both have pros and cons yeah. but yeah. they're 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 right there neck and neck i would say in just i've ridden a street glide and now this one i would say that where the street glide lacks the chieftain makes up for and where the chieftain lacks the the uh, street glide makes up for so agreed yeah all right so let's uh let's hear from our sponsor nutsack nutsack is the only edc bag the crew carries and for good reason they're crazy and awesome they get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in america with american waxed canvas american leather and american labor we want you to join us in the two-week challenge buy a bag from them use it for two weeks and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear they will give you a full refund we absolutely love ours from carrying a Around extra mags for our concealed carry 
to earbuds, sunglasses, vape stuff, and business cards. It is great having less shit in our pockets, and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down. If you buy using our link, Nutsack will give you $5 off to enjoy a beer. Head over to nutsack.com slash B2W. That's N-U-T-S-A-C dot com slash B the number two W to get yours today. And we are back now. Continuing on with our day of test riding Indian motorcycles. The next bike we're going to talk about is the Roadmaster. So... I'll start us off on this one. The lean was awesome. Didn't scrape at all. And I was trying. Um, So the, again, the weight distribution and the ride height was perfect. Uh, The seat was freaking amazing. Uh, For a stock seat, that was the most comfortable seat I've ever sat on. Um, The suspension was tuned perfectly, I think. Again, the right amount of comfort and responsiveness. Uh, so I kind of wish I had that on my road glide, especially oh, yeah. stock. That'd be awesome. I was going to say, I know a company if you want to upgrade your suspension. <laughs> I, can, I can help you out there. There you go. All right. So, Justin, you didn't have a chance to ride the Roadmaster, did you? No, I was about to get on it, and then I realized it was going to be our last ride of the day, so I hopped over to the Scout. Okay. So we'll come back to you to hear about the scout. Okay, I'll go sit back down. Okay, good boy. Uncle Ken. So, yeah, I everything you said, I, I absolutely agree with. In my opinion, just the, the way I wrote this up in the show notes, the suspension was magical. <laughs> like, I was hitting I was hitting the potholes as hard as I could. Just everything was great about it. And then I found out it, they're all done by Fox. Yeah. So, I mean, that makes sense, but it was just like a freaking cloud riding on that thing. The seat was great. The The rider's triangle, for me, was really great. Uh, one of the things I didn't like <clears throat> is when the windshield comes all the way up, mm-hmm. for me, it's directly in my line of sight. That's yeah. how high it went. Uh, and I did have buffeting no matter where the windshield was. And that makes me wonder, does like Memphis Shades or Clockworks make any aftermarket? Like I was actually yes. looking at Clockworks website today and they do have an entire line for their pro touring as well as their flare yeah they, for the indians that little flip that that clockworks has it makes Memphis a Shades world heads, of difference it changes everything and that would make that just wonderful mm-hmm. uh and for as big as that bike was i didn't get the weight of it but i imagine it's probably 900 pounds like ours or so probably it was like 970 980 yeah it's up there but it's nimble as fuck yeah like you could just throw that thing around yeah very it was just amazing. And again, I, th- I think it comes down to where they have their center of, of gravity. It's yeah, I think it's super low. balanced perfectly. And yeah, you can just toss it over and it it'll was, go. It was great. So on all the bikes, the Springfield, the Chieftain, and the Roadmaster, the one thing that I noticed, there's a lot more floorboard space. Oh, yeah. Bro. Yeah, floorboards for days. Yes. Like, there were numerous times where I missed the rear brake. It yeah. was like, oh, fuck, where's my rear brake? Oh, wait, it's further up ahead. Yeah. yeah. They're they're probably about 50 to 75% larger oh, than no Harley board. Oh, and no heel yeah. shifters. No heel shifters. Which, that's an additional option. Yeah. For me, I'm okay with that. The one thing I didn't like, and it's just because I'm not used to it, is it uses like a brake pedal stub a peg peg yeah. yeah i'm not used to that so i actually found myself using the the arm of that rear brake a lot more than the actual peg because i couldn't find it i actually liked the brake peg yeah and i had that on the chieftain i i really preferred that mm. for me i just maybe again it's probably it's, just yeah it's I'm not, not used, used to it, it. Yeah. yeah i'm still trying to get used to the pedal on my my road glide yeah but like for example my fat bomb street bomb sportsters they all had the little little peg so mm. so it's okay. what i'm used to but man yeah, it's a nice bike. Brakes work well. Yes, they do. Very well. Well, on the Chieftain, they did. I don't know about the Roadmaster, but... Yeah. The, no, well, it was great. On all the bikes, because Homeboy in front of us, <laughs> got, he he was a little bit too short. Only on one end. <laughs> the, on the leg end yep. to uh, to find the ground properly. He almost took Justin out. <laughs> and you and I, Ken, were actually rolling up on this guy <laughs> 
And I, I start seeing it. I was like, oh shit. And I, I panic braked and it got me stopped quick. Yeah. Yeah. And we had to. <laughs> We had to help the guy get his bike up because he was about to dump it over. Oh, if he, yeah, <laughs> if we hadn't been there, he'd have dumped it over to the other side. Yeah, <laughs> that and hilarious. that would have been a big dump because he he gingerly put it down. Yeah, yeah, he didn't drop it; he no. laid it down yep. slightly. But uh, but yeah, that was hilarious. All right, let's go to the FTR, Justin. We haven't heard from you in a while, so let's <laughs> let's go ahead and start with you. So I will say that the FTR had a lot of hype. Behind, mm-hmm. I mean, it's been released for what, like a year, Shit, year, year and, and a half. half. <laughs> and I'll say it was worth every day that we had to wait to get this bike. I absolutely loved this bike. It was fast. It was wheelie happy. The screen on it, granted, we rode the 1200S, so it had the nice big touch screen. The, the screen was awesome. Changing modes was stupid easy. I will say, though, I know you mentioned that you could change it on the fly. I noticed on the FTR, if you changed modes while you were going, it would sit there and spin until you came to a stop. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, was that only when you went to track mode? It might have been. Because turning off the ABS, ABS. that would make sense. So yeah. I rode, I didn't ride the uh, the S. Mm-hmm. I rode that, the the blue one they had. The regular screen? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so when I was, I think I think you're right. I think when changing modes it would go, but when you turn the ABS off, yeah. that's when it spun. So yeah, you're probably right there. Uh, some things that I, I thought needed to be highlighted was the low speed turning capabilities of this bike are the best that I've ever ridden on any bike, upgraded or not. I was so comfortable and so confident in the low speed turns. It was basically like riding a, a dirt bike is what it felt mm-hmm. like. Yeah. But at speed, I did notice like it wasn't flickable mm-hmm. like Mm-mm. the Chieftain was. You really had to put some effort into it. But then once it went over, you were in that turn. And I really liked that. It was, it almost felt like it had a steering stabilizer on it. Hmm. I don't know if you guys ever ridden one of those, but you really have to, it's got like the uh, yeah, the gas hydraulics. shocks. Yeah. yeah. So you really have to put some pressure on it. And that's what it felt like to me. Felt really awesome. Um, the riding position was very sport touring esque, mm-hmm. is how I put it. Uh, it had a very, very similar riding position to my uh, Triumph Speed Triple. So if you've ever sat on one of those, uh, very similar riding position. Uh, the rear the rear sets are definitely rear sets. It takes some getting used to for us cruiser guys. But uh, once you get into it, it's comfortable. Uh, you have a little bit of pressure on your wrists. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one thing I point out in my test ride video is that the more you ride, the less that hurts. Yeah. Your muscles build up and you're able to, it, it It takes some getting used to, but after a while you wouldn't have that issue. Yeah. And for me, <laughs> I'll be honest, this bike scared me a little bit because I, <laughs> we oh, all rode the yeah. FTRs first. Yeah. Yep. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. So... I, I didn't hear y'all's feedback. I didn't know what y'all's feedback was. So I, I was stupid and put it into track mode and turned ABS off. Cause I was Same. like, okay, let's just see what happens. That first time that wheel came up on me, I was like, Oh fuck. And I think I peed a little bit, but <laughs> I loved it. When that front wheel came up, it felt so controlled. But, but it, uh, yeah, for, for me, that bike is perfect. Yes. I, d- I could not f- now, Again, to your point on the rear sets, I actually started getting a little bit of cramping in my hip, mm-hmm. but I'm not used, used to, to riding with rear sets. I haven't been on a rear set bike in over a decade, but that bike is awesome. I would love to piss off a whole bunch of people and throw some fucking 13, 14 inch apes on there. <laughs> oh, I'd fucking kill you. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I really enjoyed that bike. I really did. And yes... The torque and the power on that bike is all there. It's all there. Oh, yeah. It's tuned so perfectly. The The power band is uh, it's so nice. It's not yeah. linear, no. so it doesn't ride like the Speed Triple. So it does have a little curve up to the top of the RPM mm-hmm. range, which makes it feel fucking nuts because you start going quick, and then you start accelerating faster while you're already going quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things that I was doing – and I'm not a wheelie guy at all. What? Yeah, no. <laughs> this does not wheelie. <laughs> um, but I, I still wanted to get on it, and I did. I wanted to see what it was like in track mode. So if I just kind of pushed up on my feet a little bit and leaned over that gas tank a little bit more, I could romp on it, and it wouldn't pick up. Yeah. And 
oh, it goes. Oh, it yeah. was awesome. And the handling, you know, there's this one section that had a pretty decent S turn. Mm-hmm. And I hammered it, and I, I was like, oh, fuck, I hope I don't kill myself. <laughs> and I leaned that thing over in that turn, and it just, boop, yep. right into it. Oh, yeah. And I don't know. I usually manhandle the bars when I'm in turns anyways. So I didn't notice it not being very flick-worthy. Yeah. But, again, different riding style. Well, that I mean, the only reason I noticed it was because that's part of my test ride routine yeah. is yeah. I always do a quick little, like – basically like a slalom to see mm-hmm. how it flicks over and it, it really stuck out. But to your point, I did not lean over the tank. I did the opposite. I leaned back to get <laughs> as much my weight on the back. And I don't know if Ken saw it. I think he was behind me when I did it, but it was right there when we turned in front of the, the I think it was like a fire department right in front of the airport. Oh yeah. Came out onto it, got onto it first, rode the wheel up the entire first, pulled in the clutch, brought the wheel down, gunned it in second, brought the wheel back up in second. <laughs> <laughs> at like probably like 50, 45, 50 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, Ken. So, yeah, this thing is just an absolute, it's a speed machine. It's a wheelie machine. Mm-hmm. It's so like, fun. I mean, even my big ass on there, all right, I could bring it up in first and second gear, no problem. No problem whatsoever. And that was like, to your point, yeah, that's kind of kind of scary. Cause, yeah. Because this guy doesn't do wheelies either <laughs> at all. <laughs> Not, not even a little bit. The torque, oh, my God. Just instantaneous. First, second, third. Yeah. It, it just you. yanks you. Yeah. yeah. What's crazy, though, is like this is a horsepower heavy motor, but yet it still has the torque to make you realize that. But it's, it's, so, yeah. it's a light bike. Yeah, it's so light, though. I mean, it's not really. No. In comparison to other, like bikes in that category but like when you say, look at the horsepower and torque compared to other bikes not even that i mean if you if you're comparing it in to, to cruisers yeah sure it's light but we i don't think it's fair to compare it to other cruisers it's not even fair to compare it to like the fat bob because you're talking about different rider triangle different frame build if you break it into the category of like say for example the yamaha mt as uh, so you'd be in like the mt10 range like it's quite a bit heavier hmm <laughs> But well, it didn't feel like it. But again, for, it didn't feel our, like it. for our comparison, though, we're on road glides. We're on no, the, absolutely. The heavier baggers. So, and in my test ride video, I did compare it more to Harley's because I know that's what my audience rides. It wouldn't right. make any sense for me to bring up yeah. the Yamaha or anything like that. And also, I haven't ridden a lot of those bikes. The only thing I can compare it to is the Speed Triple. Yeah, and I will say that weight wise. Even though I know on paper that bike weighs more, it didn't really feel like it. Mm. A little bit in the flickability, but I think that's more in the geometry of the frame and the forks and things like that. Um, As far as speed goes, it was fast, but the speed triple was definitely quicker. Mm. And it was definitely... So let me put it this way. When I was pulling the wheel up on the FTR, it felt controlled. It felt... Yeah, I didn't didn't feel like I was going to loop it. No, it was definitely not a panic wheelie at all. On the speed triple, it was hard not to panic wheelie on that bike. I mean, if you got my first, on it, my first wheelie might have been a panic wheelie. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, when, you, but when I felt that, I definitely tried it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Once you know what it's going to feel like. But on the speed triple, it's hard not to panic wheelie because mm-hmm. you go from zero to a hundred real quick. It's yeah. so easy to loop that bike, and I think a lot of that has to do with it being probably a hundred pounds lighter. Hmm. Okay, I thought it was a great bike. It's still I mean, a great bike. Don't and, get me wrong. And it's I was an comfortable excellent on it. Excellent bike. I was comfortable on it. I agree. My only issue I had was because I got big fucking feet, and mm-hmm. I wear cowboy boots, so I would I would just need to adjust the yeah. foot controls. Yeah. But being or wear better riding shoes. Or yeah, or yeah. I mean, get different riding shoes, but still, I still got big fucking feet. Yeah, the FTR is probably not built for people who wear cowboy boots. Yeah, probably not. No, yeah. no. But I mean, adjust those. You know the the position that they're sitting in. Yeah. And it'd have been fine for me. Yeah. What did you guys think about the seat? Because I felt like it was super thin. It definitely had that that sport bike esque type seat, but it was so wide and in a position to where that it actually was comfortable. I didn't have any problems with it. I, I didn't, didn't have, have any either. pressure points. No. And again, we only rode it for maybe 15, 20 minutes. True. But I'll tell you, there's some Harleys that I do get pressure point discomfort right off the bat. Within the first five, ten minutes of riding it. Yeah. And it, most of it's because Harley seats are notoriously garbage. But I think they're getting better. Yeah. I know I, I'm, I'm usually the first to hate on them, but 
seeing how, well, of course, mine's the Ultra, so it's one of the best seats they make. But even on the Fat Bob, that seat is leaps and bounds ahead of what was on my Street Bob just a year prior. Now, I haven't had a lot of experience on the other models, but I can say just on the Fat Bob alone, they're making improvements. They're definitely far from, (laughs) say, for example, the other bikes. But Well, would you say, I mean, from when you bought your Street Bob till the Fat Bob, how much weight have you lost? Uh, about 50, 60 pounds. In the big scheme of things, that's a lot. Yeah, that, but that also I'm losing a, I lost a ton of weight in my ass. I mean, you guys know I used to have to bring a seat pad in here yeah. <laughs> to sell in these seats. So if anything, that hurts the case. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I will agree that the FTR had a very comfortable seat. Yeah. Um, something else to note for the Fat Bob conversation it had a premium seat on there compared to the street bob which is stripped down so you are going to see that difference what do you mean by premium seat so the seat from your fat bob Mm -hmm. to the stock street bob my fat bob has a stock seat yes but it's the seat itself the stock seat on the fat bob is a premium it's a different version. style of seat right. absolutely but it, it's so it's going to be more comfortable because you're paying a lot more money for that bike in comparison that's true so it you is are getting an upgraded three or yeah. four grand more yeah that makes I, sense i still wouldn't call it premium that i mean if you look at the heritage the heritage has a much better seat than the fat bob so yeah, yeah i'll agree on that point so anyways let's let's go to the one and only <laughs> indian scout I feel like I was the best to review this bike. Just saying. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one that, that fucks with non-touring bikes in this group. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So the Scout, the best way that I could sum it up. So to give you guys a comparison, the Scout that I rode was the regular Scout in the green and white. It did have ABS. Uh, it's a it's $11,500 for that particular model. Uh, I said that it was a cool bike, but it felt kind of like the worst of both worlds between a Sportster and a Softail slash Dyna. Mm -hmm. Um, It was very bare bones, so you didn't get the cool screen or anything like that. You basically got just a standard analog uh, Speedo. Uh, It did not have a fuel gauge. Um, Really? Yeah, it did not have a fuel gauge. It had a low fuel light, like the Sportsters do, but it had no fuel gauge. Uh, Price-wise, it fits in between both models. So like I said, 11.5 for the Scout, uh, 9.9 for the Sportster 1200, which is in kind of that power range, and 14.5 for an entry-level soft tail. Now, of course, it was a little bit less for the Dynas around the 12, 13 range. There was nothing on the Scout that I could see or feel that justified the extra one and a half grand upgrade from the Sportster. Hmm. If I was just given $12,000, I would rather buy the Sportster and put the extra money into the Sportster as opposed to the 11.5 for the Scout. Yeah. I feel like okay. it's it's just a confused bike. It doesn't know where it wants to sit. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll just say I was pretty disappointed in it. <laughs> it looks awesome. Yeah, I, it I, looks great. I mean, we've, we've said it multiple times on the, sh- on, on the show. The, the looks of the motor, it has probably one of the best looking motors in the yep. industry. Let's face it. Yeah. Um, but when it got down to the, the bare knuckle tax, it just, it was lacking. Hmm. It, it felt like, it literally felt like a sports and a Dyna had a baby and it was an ugly baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty baby to look at, but it had a shitty personality. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cried a lot. Ugly on the inside. Yeah. The power was mediocre. Handling was mediocre. Brakes were mediocre. Everything was just meh. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Now... The Scout has ABS standard, correct? No, it's, it's an, an option. option. Okay, yeah. okay. So it's standard on all of their other models. Yes. Okay. At least that's what I understood from the website. I could be wrong on that, but I did see the colors and it had the different colors with ABS. So I'm assuming hmm. that's a terrible website. So it's a garbage yeah, website. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> um, okay, but so, it was clean. It, it was super clean. Oh, it was really nice looking. Yeah. The, the lines on it, I really like, mm-hmm. and the various setups that they have for the scout lines kind of cool i agree yeah yeah the different variances are definitely cooler than what they do with the variances on the sportster yeah um i would say from a pure aesthetic value i would say they they take it uh indian in general takes it i i I don't like their batwing fairing um the inner i don't really like their outer fairing either um 
but that's that's my chief complaint when it comes to all Indian. Mm-hmm. I don't like their fairing, and I really, really cannot stand that front fender. Hilarious. Front fender is what kills it for me. Oh, mm-hmm. the front. I j- I know people love it and they love the nostalgia, but no, that no. thing is fugly as no. sin. No, I agree. Um, and I know you can get it changed out and whatnot. You can order them from the factory with a different fender, and that's cool. But um, My question is, if you get like a large front fender like that, what kind of tool would you use to like help clean the wheels? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Let's hear from Brush Hero and come back with our closing argument. If you prefer washing your own bike and car, Brush Hero is the ultimate DIY detailing tool for you. 100% water powered, all you have to do is hook it up to your garden hose and go to town on your dirty ride. With the various interchangeable brush heads, you will be able to take care of those hard to reach spots around the engine, your rims, and anywhere else road gribe can get stuck to. So if you are a DIY detailer, pick up a Brush Hero today. And if you use the coupon code WHEELS, you will get 10% off your order. All right, and we are back. Now, today's closing argument is going to be the complete prick in me. What (laughs) bike on the market today, today, what day is this? It's May 31st when we're recording this. What bike on the market today would get you to give up that Harley life? So I have to I have to ask you to clarify this. Does this mean we have to get rid of all of our Harleys and we can only ride that yep. bike? Can I keep my t-shirt? <laughs> yes, you can keep okay. all your Harley shirts. <laughs> I have three now. <laughs> and nice. <laughs> oh man, who's going first? I'll go first. Okay. Right. I thought I had a dead answer for this, but I didn't realize that it was that. No. I, Narrow I, down. Absolutely. Hands down. I'd take the Roadmaster. Yeah? Fuck yeah. What about the Roadmaster Elite? Fuck no, that. Fuck that one. That one's a piece of shit. <laughs> Fucking garbage. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> but no, the Roadmaster, it was great. I loved it. The seat was comfortable. I mean, I'd, I'd change the bars, you know. I mean. Oh, yeah. It's going to be with just, everybody. You know, little stuff yeah. like that. But the seat was so comfortable. I mean, uh, yeah, the the trunk, tour pack. A little small. Yeah. Definitely smaller than Definitely smaller the, the Black and the Harley. But, I mean, it's something I could... My wife doesn't ride, ride me all that often, so I don't have to worry about two helmets in there. Sure. But, sure. I mean, it'll fit my helmet. Yeah. But it was such a great bike. I really enjoyed riding it. And I would absolutely... That's a legitimate contender in my ideas for what would be a replacement for my bike. Cool. Cool. All right. Justin. As long as I don't have that stupid fucking fender on there. <laughs> uh, mine would have to be a BMW ADV bike. If I had to get rid of all my Harleys, I know that that bike, even though I've never ridden one, <laughs> it's, it's kind of weird to say that I would you know, choose that bike, but I feel like it would be the most capable of handling all the different types of riding. Hmm. So you're, right now I'm multiple bikes for multiple different types of riding. If I had to get rid of all those and just pick one, it'd have to be the BMW. But to answer your question on if I had to give away or if I had to give one of my bikes for or one of my Harleys for one of these bikes, hands down the FTR. I even said on, on my test ride, I probably wouldn't buy one now just because I, I can't afford three bikes. Also, it's so good from the factory that I wouldn't have a lot of stuff to do to it. It's yeah. a it's a bike that for people that want to buy the bike and go and ride go, the shit out yeah. of it. Being a YouTuber but, doesn't make sense having it. I mean, it does. Not on a YouTube builder Build. yeah. or accessorizer or bolt sh- parts on Geyer. Um, but if I was to give, I, I said that if I hadn't bought the Fat Bomb and I wasn't already you know committed to it, and I still had the money I had from the Dyna, I would have put a deposit on the bike that day. Because nice. I would ride the absolute piss out of that bike. Yeah. That's I mean, I took the fat bob off road. Can you imagine what I would do with that bike? Oh, oh yeah. my Throw God. Throw some knobbies on there and just oh, get yeah, some town. very mild knobbies. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for me, I would totally give it up for a slingshot. I'm fucking oh, God, kidding. kidding. I am God, kidding. I quit. That's it. <laughs> Shut this fucking thing down. I'm, get the matches, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, my choice is still. Uh, kind of aligned with yours, a BMW. Uh, probably that K1600B. Really? Yeah. Uh, I, I know there's there's still some quirks about it, 
But like I said, it'd be hard for me to leave a touring bike. And maybe the ADV BMW would make yeah. sense because you still get kind of the touring aspect. Yeah. Uh, the GS, whatever the hell. Yeah. Uh, that would be a possibility, but I I would for sure leave the heart of life for that BMW K1600. Maybe not the B, maybe the GTL or whatever, but uh, everything I've been researching on them, just they're one of the best touring motorcycles out there. So anyways, go to this episode's uh, Instagram post and leave a comment letting us know what you think you would leave the heart of life if you're part of the heart of life. Uh, what bike would make you do that? And if you're not part of the Harley life and you had to join, which Harley would you get? Oh, nice. There you go. There you go. So look for this on our Instagram. Um, it's at Between Two Wheels. The two is spelled out T-W-O. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace.